start. Okay, I think we should start on time, <coughs> not to be late uh, later. Uh, so, very warm welcome to all of you. I'm very happy that so many people came to our Central European attack on Central London. <laughs> uh, as most of you know, we are trying to reclaim the avant-garde from, uh, it's now like two or three years we are trying to develop this project and thankfully we still managed to get new and new financial support from different sources uh, playing our game with uh, all these institutions. Uh, and thankfully we managed to, to organize this uh, conference here in London uh, let me first uh, thank the people who made it happen. First of all, the girls, Aneta, Christina, Maria, without them, nothing will be possible. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, we also would like to thank Brasleys uh, for hosting us here and making it happen here. Thank you very much. And a very, very, very uh, great uh, thanks to the uh, people from uh, Adam Mickiewicz Institute. Thank you so much. I'm, uh, where is, where is, ah, here you are. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope that we will have uh, two intensive, interesti interesting and very happy days here in London. Uh, so let's start uh, the first uh, panel. You all have the program, so I don't need to uh, uh, tell them, tell, tell you what's going uh, to, to happen. Uh, our first presenter for the first panel uh, is uh, Tomasz Toporisic. Uh, let me not, uh, let me not to, to read all the information you have, uh, all the information printed, so I'll just shortly introduce uh, Tomasz as a professor <coughs> from the Academy of Theatre, Radio, Film and Television, University of Ljubljana, Slovenia. And uh, the presentation is titled Back to the Future, from the constructivist Junge Slovenische Kunst to the retro avant-garde Cosmic Kinetic Cabinet Theater Nord Zero Gravity. <laughs> Thomas, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, could we uh, open just the PowerPoint? Ah, it's, it's here already. Okay. Yeah. Um, is it okay? Good morning. Uh, thank you very much for the for the introduction. Uh, my paper will deal with uh, two Slovene avant-garde projections into the utopian future. First, belonging to the historical, uh, and the other one to the post-avant-garde or retro-avant-garde of the 1980s and 1990s, when August Chernigoy a Slovene constructivist avant-garde artist living and working in Trieste during the ascent of both futurism and fascism wrote in 1927, we the barbarians are more skillful and artistically gifted than all French, Italian and German commercial prostitutes. He was <laughs> referring to the very division of Europe into West and East and Old and New. While trying to establish specific and utopic concept of the new Slovene theater, together with the avant-garde theater director and Piscato student Ferdo Delac, he was forming a new vision of the Central European avant-garde. This vision was not realized before the Second World War, but served as a starting point for the post-avant-garde movement, Neue Slovenische Kunst. In the 1980s, late socialist Slovenia and Yugoslavia, establishing its own artistic NSK state and citizenship, as well as highly specific theatrical project of cosmokinetic theater Norden. Thus, a dream-like futuristic projection of the historical avant-garde came through at the very end of the 20th century. The utopist idea of junge slovenische Kunst was fulfilled by utopist but highly elaborated project of Dragan Živadino, a candidate cosmonaut and a post-conceptual performance artist. In his theater in Gravity Zero, 
that liberates the theatrical performance of the gravity. Givadino was born in the 1960s. Uh, here we, sh we see some, uh, uh, some pictures of his performances, and this is the music, basically the, 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 the album of Leibach, which is a part of Neue Slowenische Kunst, the musical group. Leibach is the, the German name of, for Ljubljana. Born in 1916, Slovenia, small town of Ilirska Bistrica, Živodino co-founded in 1983 the Scipion Nasice Sisters Theatre. In 1995, he started fi his 50 years project, extending to the futuristic year of 2045 with a specific artistical suicidal action Gravity Zero of the protagonist Dragon Givodino, the only survival of the artistic team from 1995 from that time. We see the picture of Neue Slovenische Kunst Collective. Of course, at the background, we have Tatlin's monument for the third international. So we could see that all the Neue Slovenische Kunst had a lot of references to the historical avant-garde, used the past in order to get the art for the future, so to say. We'll have a close, a quick look at, a pro at, the, at the project of 50 years pro uh, project of zero gravity, as explained by Dragan Givodino. We have to try to, uh, to see this video. Uh, we have to see if there is a... Do you think we could uh, put some... Volume up? Volume up, yeah. If not, we'll just <coughs> have a... <coughs> ah, volume, sorry. No, it's No, we'll just have to see, we'll just see some uh, of the pictures and I'll continue. Uh, there is a big probability that his dream may never come true, but nevertheless, his project is far from being a pure phantasm. In his specific artistic project, the historical avant-garde concept of the Zenitist Barbaro Genius incarnates in the futuristic actors in their substitutes in the gravity zero situation. The paper will deal with some aspects of this artistic procedure enabling Givodino to reappropriate the past in order to get the access to the utopia of the future. I will read a short description of the project for the beginning and what we are seeing here are, is Dragan Givodino explaining the project uh, which, we're wa which we're watching. We're watching the first repetition of the, the premiere of the performance, which was in 1995. Each, the first repetition was in 2005. The second one will be, was in 2015. The third one will be in 2025. So basically the whole concept of the performance is a durational concept which goes to 2045. And he declares, me, Dragan Givodino, theater director, announced the project which would last for the next 50 years. The Northern Prayer Machine stretches out into the year 2045. The production will be repeated every 10 years until the year of 2045. The first repetition will take place on April 2005 with the same actors and actresses, in the same costumes, in the same scenery, on the same day, and at the same time as 10 years before. If an actor or actress dies, she will be replaced by a movable robotic costume symbol combined with melody and rhythm. The four following productions will be guided by the same principle. The second repetition will take place in 2015, the third one 2025, the fourth one 2035, and the fifth one in 2045. By the time of the fifth repetitions, all the actors will be dead. 
and stage will be full of robotic symbols, melodies, and rhythms. The only survivor will be the director, Dragan Živodino, who together with the actor substitutes will be launched in a spacecraft from a Russian launching site into the northern orbit of the zero gravity by installing the actor substitutes in position close to information satellites around the planet Earth. Givaldino will abolish retrograde activities and he predicts, I, Dragan Givaldino, will die on the 1st May of 2000. 45. So this is basically the project he's explaining, but because we don't hear him, I, I read it. Uh, and we will proceed now. And this is Hermann Potochnik Nordung, the inventor of geostationary satellites who lived in Vienna and whose work, uh, uh, on whose work Dragan's, Givadino's work is dedicated basically to. We will move to back to the future, back to the futurist Trieste in the 1920s. There, of course, is a big probability that the project, the dream of Dragan Givadino, may never, never come true. He could die before, he could die later, and so on. But nevertheless, his project is far from being a pure phantasm. In his specific artistic project, the historical avant-garde concept of the Zenitist Barborogenius incarnates in the futuristic actors and their substitutes in gravity zero situation. But let us go back to the time of 1920s and uh, remind us of some historical facts. He, he basically starts on the, some historical facts he uses as a material for his project. The painter and visual artist August Chernigoy and the theater director Ferdo Delok, Delok were both Slovenes who came from the northern eastern Italy, which was highly marked, of course, by the Italian futurism and its events. I will sum up two events, which are cultural, artistic, and political. Firstly, Marinetti's appearance in Trieste in 1908 at the memorial service for irredentist martyr Guillermo Oberdan, who has been arrested and sentenced to hanging by Austrian police following his failed assassination attempt on Emperor Franz Josef. Secondly, the first futurist Serata in Politama Rossetti in Trieste, in the Trieste Theatre in 1910, attended by a spectacular attendance of 2,000, among them collaborators of the Slovene and Italian avant-garde. <laughs> the reception of the futurist ideas in Slovenia has to be linked with the radical changes in the geopolitical situation of the Slovene <laughs> territory after the First World War and the collapse of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy. The Slovene territory was split into two parts. One was Ljubljana as its capital, and it belonged to the newly formed kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes, the first Yugoslavia. The second part, with Trieste and Gorizia as the two cultural centers, belonged to Italy. The Italian kingdom led a polit policy of Italianization with the aim to force cultural and ethnic assimilation of the native minority populations living in the former Austro-Hungarian territories that Italy has received in exchange for joining an alliance with the United Kingdom in the First World War. Already on the 30th of July of 1920, the black shirts burned down the National Hall, or the Narodni Dom, the Slovene Narodni Dom in Trieste, along with the Slovene Theater, the cultural economic center of the Slovene inhabitants of the city. Mussolini praised the action as a masterpiece of the Triestine fascism. In two years, he would become the prime minister of Italy. The destruction was part of more extensive violence against the Slovenes and the Slavs in Trieste. In September 1920, Mussolini proclaimed in Pula, in Pola, in today's Croatia, when dealing with such a race as Slavic, inferior and barbarian, 
We must not pursue the carrot but the stick policy. We should not be afraid of new victims. The Italian border should run across the Brenner Pass, Monte Nevoso and Dinaric Alps. I would say we can easily sacrifice, sacrifice 500,000 barbarian Slavs for 50,000 Italians. End of quotation. The process was radicalized during the period of fascism between 22 and 43. This was one of the main reasons why Slovene avant-garde turned from the futurism and tried to find its own alternative for the hegemonic Western-centric ideal in which the Slavic avant-garde did not see its future. With an idea about the new constructivist aesthetic revolution of the Slovene avant-garde, Chernigoy came to the idea to radicalize it, together with Ferdo Delak and theoretical writer Bratkov Kreft, who wrote about the proletarian stage. The leading personality of this group was Chernigoy, whom I will introduce a bit because I don't think a lot of you know about him, who spent the years from 22 to 24 in Germany, first in Munich and then in Weimar and in, uh, at the Bauhaus. In the Bauhaus school, he had two very different teachers, Kandinsky and Moholy Nagy. Nevertheless, we should remember that Gropius, Paul Klee and Oskar Schlemer also taught at Bauhaus when he was there. And in 1923, he already became a supporter of the constructivism. He fashioned his special version of constructivism and propagated it first in Ljubljana and then afterwards in Trieste. Here we see some of his sketches which are clearly influenced by constructivism but also by the Italian futurism of the region and elsewhere. The basis of Chernigov's constructivism can be ideologically and politically linked to the Russian constructivism. Some of his works should show the influence of Tatlin, Rochenko, El Lisitsky. His manifestos are filled with echoes of the political and artistic slogans taken from both the Russian constructivism and Italian futurism. In his 1924 Ljubljana exhibition, which he called simply the first constru constructivist exhibition, he announced with the typical avant-garde slogans. I quote some of them. The artist must become an engineer, and the engineer must become an artist, and the one which is very good for today's use, capital is theft. Soon after his second exhibition in 1925, he was accused of communist propaganda and had to leave Ljubljana. As a political exile, he chose Trieste and found it in Trieste, which was a the city of futurism, a Trieste constructivist group with several artists. Founding a school and movement based on constructivism in Trieste, the city of the first futurist Serate and of the increasingly fascist movement was certainly a political issue at the time. It is no coincidence that he wrote in one of his manifestos, mainly Saluto, that constructivism is a Slavic avant-garde movement that will take a bridge of the artistic civilization between Europe and Balkans. Here we see the main action of the, uh, of the Trieste constructivist using, of course, a lot of symbols, uh, among, uh, symbols among some of them the quotation of Male Malevich on the top of the, of the space. But I, we will talk about this, uh, this uh, later on. Here we see also some pictures and some uh, uh, of, uh, by Chernigoy of the, of the Slovene constructivist poet, uh, some, uh, some works of the other members of the Triesting group. So this is uh, scenography for a new opera, Black Masks, the avant-garde opera. The Trieste constructivist group proclaimed constructivism is a Slavic avant-garde movement 
that will make a bridge of the artistic civilization between Europe and Balkans, the very continent of the young, strong race. So we could see that they link here to Lyubomir Mitzic, of course, and the Zenitism in Zagreb and, of course, mainly in, in Belgrade. They founded a new, this is a picture of uh, the composer, they founded a new theatric, uh, a new uh, magazine, the avant-garde magazine, which they called the Tank, and which was very influential for this time. And in the manifesto for the first and the half issue, they didn't want to second the second issue, but they issued, could, issued the first and the first and the half issue. They wrote, long live Tank, the international journal of the new art of Ljubljana, Slovenia, a movement which our new journal will endow with life and power. All of you who live in the spirit of the times opt for the propaganda and propagate the new Slovenian and international art across the border of the nation, the mighty force must, must reach the world where the struggle is also con continuing and is victorious. His colleague, Ferdo Delac, the, the disciple of, um, of Piscator, published in 1925 a manifesto of new Slovene theatre, which he called Novi Order, very simply, or New Stage. And in this manifesto, which was, which was published in a magazine, he advocated the theatrical innovations of Vachtango, Maer Merhold, Tairo, Eisenstein, Russian Futurism and Constructivism, German Bauhaus, the political theatre of Spiskator, and of course the Futurist theatrical concept. The intention of Delac and the Slovene historical avant-garde of that time was not just to bring about the aesthetic revolution, to use the term of Jacques Rancière, but to affect a total overall of society. Their interest was the expulsion of the masses and the world of industrial labor of political agitation. The aim of this political agitation was clear. Theater has to be a form of cultural combat that will lead the artists out of their own ivory tower and give them a chance to participate, like the workers or soldiers in the battle for world progress. But because of futurist links to fascism, the Slovenes moved into the another direction to revive the Yugoslav avant-garde after it had lost its essential vein of communication, they found out the magazine Tank. Chernigoy and Delak wholeheartedly embraced Zenitism of Lyubomir Micic. The concept of barbarogenius, because they believed it could serve as a counterpart to some futurist activities that were linked with the fascist, fascism and its declarations of superiority of Western Italian national culture. Delek published his issue of the avant-garde Review Tank, Revue Internationale, a publication with an international rotation. He even persuaded <coughs> Herbert Walden in Berlin to devote in January 1928 issue of his journal Der Sturm to Junge Slovenische Kunst. And of course, this Junge Slovenische Kunst was the inspiration for later on for Neue Slovenische Kunst. But the main idea that interests us here is Barbarogenius, the idea of the Southern Slavic barbarian as a reformer of European art. Chernikov therefore wrote, we, the barbarians, are far more skillful and artistically gifted than all French and so on and so on. I quoted this in the beginning. From the historical avant-garde, we will now move to the 1980s and 1990s approach to the tradition of the avant-garde. Here we see the picture of Neue Slovenische Kunst passport, the passport of artistic 
uh, we, as an artistic project, which worked for quite for quite some time, especially with the new uh, uh, countries emerging after the fall of the of the Berlin Wall, it really worked also not just symbolically but also uh, in 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 real time because nobody knew which new <laughs> states were <laughs> present and uh, nobody knew Slovenia anyway, so they thought Neue Slovenische Kunst is a new state in somewhere in Eastern Europe between between Prague probably and uh, Ulaanbaatar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From the historical avant-garde, we will now move to the 1980s, 1990s approach to the tradition of the avant-garde. The artists will, we will concentrate will be Dragan Givadino, we quoted already today. Our thesis will be that the post-avant-garde art used the avant-garde as a specific material linked in to the non-realized Delac and Chernegov's vision of Central European avant-garde. Neue Slovenische Kunst and Givadino established in 1980s late socialist Yugoslavia their own artistic NSK state and citizenship that can be interpreted as a fulfillment of this utopist idea of the 1920s. They deliberately drew alternative political and cultural maps that changed the cultural uh, geography of Europe on which the reformers of art came not from the West, but from the European periphery, as was the case in a lot of cases which are neglected during the historical avant-garde already, and invaded Europe with their barbarogenous aesthetic revolutions, so to say. The Irvan group, uh, which is the group of painters belonging to the Neue Slovenische Kunst, thus proclaimed an East art map, a reconstruction of the missing history of contemporary art, art networks and art conditions in Eastern Europe from the Eastern European perspective. As the last phase of the presentation, we will have a quick look at Givadino's 50 years project, or we will continue this look, and we will see how it links to the constructivism in Trieste in the 19th 20s. Based on a dramatic plot that thematizes the relationship between art and state through the historicization and historical reconstruction of Shakespeare's biography, his project Norduk 1995-2045 is highly complicated and complex preparation procedure for lancing the new idea of the theater. The project, of course, we here we see Dragan Givadino in, uh, in, uh, in, in uh, Russian, uh, one of the Russian launching uh, systems. Uh, the, con the, the artist who's a, a candidate cosmonaut. The project, of course, alludes to Ben Vautier's 1960s Fluxus work announcement of my funeral in which Vautier created certificates on which he signed both his own and Yves Klein's death and created a strange statement and prediction. Givadino produces also a strange prediction, proclaiming the project to begin in 1994 to abolish all the retro avant-garde science and to be fulfilled by his death in 2045. With this fac fact, Givadino proclaims all his performances to be farewell rituals from a specific line of the avant-garde art established retroactively. His 50 years project uses pastiche and recycling of pre-existing themes and styles in a new context. Thus, in 2009, he held a lecture devoted to Trieste Constructivist Ambiance as an announcement of the prosgravitation art. The Trieste Constructivist Cabinet which was conceived in, in 1927 by Stepanci, Chernigoy, Karmelic and Lach, the, the avant-garde artists, and the interesting thing 
Kozhivodino concentrates in on that project is an effort to overcome what they believed was the last problematic planetary force. Givadino thinks that the constructivist in Trieste were thinking about the gravity, that they created the suspended installation in the pavilion of, in Trieste. <coughs> the pot photograph of the show was published in 1927 in constructivist journal Tank when the critic wrote, I quote, for the first time, they have not tried to exhibit the objects, but they let them levitate from the ceiling on thin things. With this, the objects lost their earthbound gravity, and so their spiritual moment was highlighted. This is the quotation from the 1927, and it links directly to Givadino's project. We can see that the concept of Givadino's 50 years project in Gravity Zero is linked to the utopia of the constructivists, the urge of them to fulfill with the Trieste constructivist cabinet something which is a utopic wish. And of course, Givadino proclaims the post gravity art as a continuation of this constructivist actions. I will quote just some of his uh, words from this is from this is taken in the in the 2005 uh, in 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 the, in the plane of uh, in the train where they train the Russian uh, cosmonauts in near, near Moscow in illusion, in illusion and they produce the gravity zero and this basically the, the, the action was taken in the gravity zero action but it, it was using the symbols and the objects of the historical avant-garde, the Russian avant-garde and of course the Slovene constructivist avant-garde. What is post-gravitational art according to Givadino? It is categorically all art that will shape itself under conditions of zero gravity. So it's not pr it's produced now, but it will be produced in the future as good things. Post-gravitational art is not an artistic stylistic formation and has no intention of becoming one. Thousands of years in gravity zero have also, sh also shaped art, he thinks, particularly its structure elements. The 21st century is develop, developing its thinking about the post-gravitational art on the basis of the avant-garde strategies of the previous century. With his statement, art is but a temporary religion, Givadino echoes and paraphrases Marcel Duchamp and his statement about art. I quote Duchamp, I just don't believe in it with all mystical trimmings. As a drag, it's probably very useful for a number of people, very sedative, but as a religion, it's not even a go as good as God. End of quotation of Marcel Duchamp. To slowly conclude, this is one of the Russian cosmonauts with the uh, constructivist uh, background. And this is one of the performances by Dragan Givodino, which uses the quotation of course, of the historical avant-garde, of the two Slovene historical avant-garde. On the left side, we have the neo-avant-garde, the group called OHO, and on the right side, we have the, the, the magazine, which was called uh, Tank. With his, to slowly conclude, his performances echo the, and here we have a picture of this uh, uh, constructivist um, action in 1927. His performances or the performances of Dragan Givadino echo the impossibility of the avant-garde utopian ideas as stressed in Maxim Gorky's imaginary statement from the scenario for, the, for one of his performances, of Givadino's performances. I quote, I want art to abolish politics. I want art to become a religion. I want millions to kneel to art. End of quotation. Art being but a temporary religion, avant-garde utopian ideas had to collapse, but they reappear in various forms to be uttered again and again. 
They reappear in different restagings of prayer machines, of farewell ritual, specific oratorios and requiems for the avant-garde. And we'll just now have a look at, for two minutes, at uh, a piece, uh, at the part of, the, of this action in zero gravity, in which the actor or the dancer uses the symbol from the constructivist exhibition. If it works, we'll see if it works. If not, this is a normal gravity and then it will change into the zero gravity, which we'll see clearly. This is, this is already in the zero gravity simulation. And the object he has in hands, it's the object from the constructive exhibition in Trieste in 1927. Of course, we see the performance is not very well structured because we're still not used to the gravity zero uh, conditions. But when we get used to it, it will get much better. But it's interesting in itself. Uh, and I'll finish with this. Fragmented, deconstructed, and appropriated in the global world of exchange, art works today as specific decontextualization and recontextualization of big utopian questions of the historical avant garde. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Thomas. I, I, I think it was a great introduction to the subjects we'll, we'll discuss later, uh, both the link between past, future, and present, maybe. Uh, the deep goal of our project of reclaiming avant-garde, in fact, is to reclaim this avant-gardist notion of rethinking the world, rethinking art, and looking for some real innovations. And I like also this very much this idea of uh, barbarian genius of uh, Slavic, Slavic culture. Uh, I propose that we will have discussion after all three presentations, uh, and then we um, invite uh, all three mm -hmm. uh, presenters uh, to, to answer the questions. So now let's move to Hanna Veseloska from Kiev uh, University, and her presentation is about the smart harlequin in the space of avant-garde and the modern theatre. First, um, dear friends, a hundred years ago, when the theatre was at the uh, forefront of avant-garde art, the question arose about the, what an actor of the future should be. That is why in the early or at the beginning of his career, just when the young theatre he had created passed the first year, Ukrainian director Les Kurbas, this is Les Kurbas, was already writing something on this new actor theme in his manifesto theatrical letter in 1918. After desperate reflection on the routine of the theatre, he proclaimed that the ideal of a new actor should be a smart harlequin who will not focus on reaching the fair-like type of the audience, but will go thought to himself. The Kurba's vision of new actors provoked the well-known idea of theatricality by Nikolai Yevrenev, uh, set forth in his uh, book Prostena Sua and popularization during the public lectures in 1918 in Kiev. This abstract statement on actor searching for himself defined one of the key methods in implementation the Kurba's concept of scenic imagery, better <coughs> known as transformation. A liberated and psychologically elastic actor become one obligatory component of theatrical transformation, which was based on metaphorically associative transformation of reality into a new realm on stage, rather than initiating of imitating a form of life by artistic means. Smart Harlequin must express on stage as fully as possible his life and worldview position, his own eye, independently formulation artistic and social tasks. However, 
the making of smart harlequin was complicated by many factors, including the lack, lack of professional training among some members of the young theatre, as well as extremely unstable political situation in Ukraine at the time. Accordingly, during the period of 19th, 18th, 20, Kurbas would resort to, in, to an intense look out for a ready-made harlequin in the shape of star actresses. He also tries to grow smart harlequin in the process preparing the production. Therefore, a lot of time was spent on the laboratory work in, in, at his theater Choreographer training was conducted under the leadership by Branislava Nizinska and Mikhail Mortkin. The actors visited museums, participated in artistic discussion, in, partic in particular in the Kiev Bohemian clubs, one of which was extensively described by Mikhail Bulgakov in his novel The White Guard. Les Kurbas wanted to cultivate with members of Young Theatre a good taste and aesthetic orientation and to form an intellectual in, in environment that would enable actors to independently go throughout the creative transformation of reality. As a result, intellectualism and rationalism of an actor's work so provoked by the directors became one of the defended moments of the transformation system and distinguished it from other theatrical systems of the early of 20th century. At the same time, whereas during the young theatre period the intellectualism of smart harlequin concerned primary artistic ideas, the following years so Kurbas led theatre positioned as active socialist organism that respond to modern events. Uh, the main principle of the transformation could be found in what was branded as increased living functionality and so-called accentuated influence. The director insists um, on a social formatting function of the theatre its important mission in the life of society, the very fact that it can reveal, affect, and they organize certain public moods and aspiration. This understanding by Les Kurbas of the task facing the stage was entirely consistent with the concept of the life building mission of avant garde art. This is something that he will try to realize in a later years. Therefore, Smart Harlequin is an actor who broadcasts throughout an image transformation his critical vision of the social situation around him and thus becomes a key figure in the theatre of accentuated influence. Quite indicative in this respect are uh, two Kurbas production of Shakespeare Magbas in 1920 and 1924 in both cases, thanks to this metaphorical transformation of smart harlequin actor, the audience would register proper associative moments in its imagination and the essence of the spectacle as the whole, uh, whole would be made clear. The main content of the first Kurbas Magba, directed Magbas in 1920 in the Kiev Drama Theatre, where he and Vladimir Kalin performed the uh, lead roles, Magbas first, consists of arguments about man and war, and the generally military disunity that turns everything into nothing. After all, Ukrainian back then was swept by the civil war. The theater was located in the immediate vicinity of the war front. The troop declared itself a cultural a detachment of fighter, and the directors made a solemn oath to the red flag. The actors did not take part in any battles, but every day they could see what weapons do to people and how in the war condition and human being stops being human and his or her psyche is being destroyed. In this circumstances of the frontline theater, stage settings were extremely primitive, 
uh, stop, um, uh, extremely primitive, and stage costumes were normally made by performance themselves. The audience was supposed to focus on scenic images that were to become prominent metaphors. Thus, the witches resembled dry trees, stones, and even some coat ladies, and in the director's hymn were personified the evil, the desire of power throughout the corpse of people and friends. Macbeth's monologue in the third act was supplemented by the metaphor metaphorical game with the crown, which hung in the ring of the throne and was about to fall. As Kurbas explained, Macbeth proclaims a monologue that speaks of one thing, while the other is really a subconscious process. It is detected by the motion of the fugues around the crown. The viewer's attention is divided into two processes. The viewer watches what the Macbeth says and for what he does, and this uh, in this case, an actuated perception of the viewer. When staging Macbeth for the second time, this is first Macbeth and the first Macbeth, and the second time Macbeth, uh, Kurbas made some big cuts in the text to add new scenes containing interludions of, on topical themes. This is the second Macbeth. Uh, he believed that Shakespeare should be given a new interpretation by using his place for the political interest of the present. That is why he put out a sarcastic parable about ways to gain power and its rapid change. The fact that it was not about Middle Age, but rather about the present, was emphasized by suits that were a mixture of overalls with details of medieval clothes and military uniforms. Mm. Macbeth was in a long shirt made of the uh, sag clothes, wearing soldiers' trousers and helmet. Witches were dressed in grew blue suits, white trousers, holding spikes and sporting and red banks. Secondary actors were in working clothes with colored patches. The witches' suits was electrified uh, to produce flashes of light from time to time. However, Kurbas changed not only the, the era but also the main character. Um, that, um, that character looked similar to a harlequin uh, and was jester. Where is jester? In Macbeth. Jester. Maybe this. This one? Try, uh, try. try. Mm -hmm. No, uh, this is uh, previous, previous. Jester, yes. Jester. Jester. Mm -hmm. um, uh, performed by Ambrosio Buchma. Jester plays three key interludes. In first uh, uh, interlude, he was Jester, the gatekeeper, who was doing gymnastic tricks, jumps, and making various topical pronouncements from the stage. Such pronouncements were, for example, about the fact that one actress has shown and the theater and the theater is giving you premises in a state-owned public bus. In the second interlude, which came ri uh, right after the scenes of numerous killing, he was playing a role of mover death, which would uh, move of the rays of lights breaking out under his uh, arms. And in the final interlude, final uh, next, final interlude, uh, uh, the final uh, sarcastic, grotesque, grotesque stage of permanent coronation, just after changing just clothes, not his makeup, dressed in the golden tiara and white cape, became a bishop and began to crown all con uh, con uh, contenders for the throne. Each of those nobles who were present on the stage would take turns to sit on the throne and various standing by would immediately chop off their heads. The coronation comedy could last forever. 
Jester Smart Halikin was essentially the only person who not only acted on the concrete dramatic situation, but understood the general course of historical events and tried to give this understanding to public. Uh, having walked throughout the stage on, in diagonal, mover death would approach the audience in the front row, ask it someone for a cigarette and hold, and then return it to the owner. Serbi establishment contenting uh, with the public. Um, uh, second, mark uh, but close, and the second. Following several expressionist representation in the early 1920s, where the main personality was self differentiated ma man mass, in 1926, stages uh, Kurba stage Golden Gods by Fernand Kromelink. Unclear to the Soviet audience, the surrealistic text of this play, which in the end led to its quick removal from the theatre repertoire, had a personal, deeply symbolic meaning to Kurbas. First off, the fetishization of gold by the main character, Pierre Auguste, was interpreted by the director as the fact that a person become a hostage of, of his own ideas and dreams and eventually dies because of this. His left wing's political views made Kurba such a hostage in the mid of 1920s. The authorities had forced him to drift toward propaganda, which he could hardly accept knowing that he would then be condemning himself artistic death. Secondly, the protagonist Pierre Auguste was a man with obvious mental disorders Something that, according to his contemporaries, was true for Kurbas himself in these particular years. The image of animal and open zolota. The image of the animal cage society that was surrounding Pierre Auguste became the main one in the play. So the vast majority of character, while preserving their human strides, would degrade in the behavior to extent of resembling animals. For this to be depicted, Kurbas encouraged the actors to find characteristic transformation and use cartoon crunch. Some character had their heads deformed and were making all kinds of strange movements as if they were in, in, insane. The notary, next, uh, next, next, next. The notary resembled a monkey, the mayor a rabbit, uh, the hairdresser a donkey, and to show that the latter was brainless, the actor put on straw wick in his head, while funny made under the ma name Flor uh, Frumans was a fox. Uh, and then, Ah, stop. Uh, the group of women, uh, village dwellers who chase pure August in her tents, resembled nice hands. The type of nature, um, the type and nature of characters were underlined by colorless wings. Their movements and gestures, and when the intonation was sharp, hyperbolic, and grotesque. Other character, next. Um, Next, <coughs> next, uh, 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 stop. Uh, other character, Melina, Barbalesque, and servant by the name of Muscar, acted as ordinary people, but they were the manifestation of human voices such as greed and hypocrisy. For example, servant Muscar, um, in the right, uh, like a real robber, held a whip and a knife. Almost all of the action was taking place at the stage is highly naturalistic setting of a huge room. Next, 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 huge room. The look-alike reality was um, 
amplified by sound landscape, the barking of a dog, the screech of windmill, the grating of peaks, the noises coming from a port, the rumble of thunderstorm, and so on. However, the sense of reality will be broken by the fact that the naturalistic interior behind which the Flemish landscape would emerge was tucked over by a huge web, the symbol of grit. No, a huge web, you see this. The surrealistic impressions was also due to scenes where shield-like uh, uh, posters had been raised all over the place to cases associated with the pressing political problems of the day throughout such images as prison or squadron of warships. The new owner of this stra strange estate, Pierre Auguste, who appears in the final act dressed in the theatrical royal costume and eats to the dreamed gold serves a metaphorical alter ego for young Les Curbas, uh, young Les Curbas who had found himself trapped political, uh, politically and was to do from his own instatable social dreams. Adams uh, closes. Uh, Attempts to metaphorically reveal throughout this smart harlequin the conceptual idea of play is evident in the work of several contemporary Ukrainian directors, Hamlet. Quite indicated in this regard is, is for example, a recent production of Hamlet by Rostislav Derzhipilsky, 1917. The spectacle has a gen Defined definition new opera horror, which fully corresponds to a location where it's performed. A concrete cellar under the stage of the theater with constant music accompaniment. Uh, the text is abbreviated to the abstract, separate storylines are removed from it, and the cemetery is the only place of action. Um, the character she did slowly rise from their grown stones and join our living world. Uh, grown stones, uh, yes. Also emerging from his grown stones is the Hamlet, who immediately realized that the, his homeland has be ca been captured by the dark forces. The suggested metaphors that appear to be based on the Shakespeare text are quite clear to a contemporary viewer. The endless cemetery is a country devised by those in power, whereas the role of mightly and ready for, for all Hamlet, played by Alexey Gnatkovsky, presents a war volunteer who was among the first to go out and defend Ukraine from Russia aggression. Such Hamlet is a man of resistance who are fully aware aware of his goals and does everything to bring back to the country the forces of good. As he fails to do so at this point, he arranged close enough the spectator for a funeral feast involving frying and eating meat, before the final act sees the appearance of forty brands, someone resembling a member of parliament of all convocation and an official one of the same time. The idea for such a metaphorical understanding of Hamlet belongs to the performer of, he, of this role, Alexey Gnatkovsky, who is also a co-producer of the play. To a large extent, he used a suggestion initially made by Kurbas. Now, Kurbas was against the idea of his actors in the Hamlet role going back to the, this historic character. On the contrary, Kurbas wanted him to implant this character into circumstances of the given present day. Otherwise, um, close and otherwise, when it comes to verbatim plays, an actor's search for himself enables such actors to mentally bring a character closest to himself. Perhaps the best illustration of this can be found in play Bad Roads by Natalia Varshbit which was first staged in Ukraine in 1918. Several months clear, uh, early, it was presented in London Royal Court Theatre. The play is based on the documentary stories of people who were in Donbass 
near or in the front line, and sometimes even in captivity became volunteers or just lived there. For actors living in the peaceful capital Kiev and therefore not personally exposed to everyday horrors of war, it has not been easy to find rational explanation for all the extremists told in such war stories. Who became a common theme, uh, what became a common theme for all epi uh, episodes of ro uh, Bad Roads is directed by Tamara Trunova is love in its various forms. Love leads a woman to follow a military man to the war town Donbass. Make her transport the corpse of a lover throughout the front line. While a female journalist has to remain in occupied Donetsk and school goes go uh, to a soldier's trench. These horrible, often ugly stories are presented by actresses as a history of various, various manifestations of love, which is what transforms the text into a metaphor for love conventions. Such a sentimental transformation of cruel play makes all female character in Bad Roads essentially appears as a bride. Um, this is seen from occupied Donetsk. Uh, uh, brides, uh, this is girls uh, like uh, uh, brides, uh, irrespective of their age, looks and personal situation. Taken together, they can be perceived as a metaphor for anti-death. In conclusion, we can see the point behind the metaphorical present uh, presentation of controversial social and political issue facing modern Ukrainian in in Bad Roads and Hamlet. This is a good indi indication of how far the theater has gone today to employ this Mark Hallikin method proposed by Les Kutmas exactly 100 years ago. What we have arising from the displayed intellectualism is a unique theatricality, the one of the provocous numerous associating to a love for a proper communication with viewers without City. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Hannah. Uh, with another step uh, for you who uh, took part in previous activities of this project, another step to uh, uh, being introduced to the uh, richness of um, Ukrainian avant garde. And now let's uh, move to, to uh, Czech Republic. Uh, Andrea Jochmanova from the Moravian Museum Brno and the presentation is titled A World Behind the Space Historical Analysis. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I will solve just some troubles with techniques and uh, I have to say thank you, my gorgeous Maria, <laughs> for borrowing me your stuff. So I can uh, so I can read it. So this man is Jiri Freika. I absolutely know uh, you didn't maybe never uh, you never heard his name. Sorry, we, we just published two books about yeah. Central European Avant-garde. So it's okay. <laughs> All these names some of you, are some, known of you. To <laughs> some of you. Sorry. Some of you. Some of you. So uh, yeah, this was the greatest surprise at the Minster conference because no one knew there is some theater in Middle Europe. <laughs> and it was the <laughs> conference about the avant <laughs> so thank you very much for your, uh, for your great job you are doing. And uh, let's say, let's start maybe with a quotation, not by Jiri Freika, but uh, by Karel Taige, who was the phenomenon of Czech avant-garde who said in 1928, after he's been uh, at Pau House and he was the one who was connected to all European avant-garde, he said something like this. For some time now, uh oh, this was dramatical. <laughs> for some time now, all intelligent people with a healthy taste for life have been meticulous and avoiding the theater. Modern life has evacuated academic auditoria. So, 
let's say we have to start from the very beginning where the new theater science started to be formulated not also by scientists but also by practitioners who started to be some kind of new kinds of theorists and scientists of theater so let's say from the end of the 19th century, the attitude to theatre of modernists and exponents of the avant-garde underwent numerous changes, as we know, commonly induced by far-reaching social reforms. I think uh, the whole Europe has the same connection between theatre, politics, status, uh, statuses and social approaches. So I won't explain it uh, in the several details. So all such tendencies were ruled by the desire to break away from conventional stagecraft, which, especially in the post-war period, <laughs> had come to be seen as rather antiquated and unsuited to the needs of the modern world. Shortly, 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 mm -hmm. ah, funny things happened all the time to my life. Shortly after the first young artist theatre group in Czechoslovakia were trying to find different theatre style, they were searching theoretically on new understandings of theatre as modern art for idealistic socia society. During the period of 20s, huge range of avant-gardist activities were brought to effect while strongly connected to the programme of the Union of Modern Culture called Deviatsil. If you want to explain, so just pop, pop there. So it's a Devetsil is the flower in English, butterbur, Deutsch, the pest word, French uh, in French language, pâtisserie. So in full understanding, Deviet means nine sil powers. So Devetsil is about nine powers of art. Uh, so Devetsil started with its theory of poetism and constructivis constructivism and its contacts with the European avant-garde led towards international cooperation, cooperation of artists and arts. Influenced by uh, the contemporary European trends leading towards synthesis as supported by the theory of practice, especially Russian, di of especially Russian directors, Progressive Czech dramatics also began to see a certain conception of theatre in which all the components, all the components of theatrical expression were interwoven. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> Simultaneous, uh, simultaneously with the Vietzel and few short-term experimental groups, uh, started to spread out whose role was in improving the theatre praxis in accordance with the actual practical, theoretical and historical research of European modernists and avant-gardists, while trying to applicate the artificial forms and, of course, the technical development. Uh, of course, they started as total amateurs in open space with no curtain, with uh, the scenography just uh, painted down the wall, the floor, and uh, they started suddenly in 1925 using the constructivistic visions into their scenography. The directors, as Vladimir Gamza, Indri Honzel, Jiří Freika and the others, and Emil František Burian as well, became to be also the theot theoretists who were in their program manifestos focused on the changes of the stage, theatre languages, actors and scenography, lighting and other parts uh, that are making the components of the theatre art. This endeavour has helped with the broad understanding of reformistic efforts connecting and separating modern styles, constitutions of theatre artefacts as artificial genre made on synthesis of many arts. As Freika said in 1933, any theatre is and will be modern in proportion to its willingness to go in search of a new audience and let go of its traditional forms, whether artistic or intellectual and social. So not only did the program need to be formulated theoretically, but the elements that seemed problematical in relation to other kinds of theatre. 
now you see the realization. So, <laughs> and the general state of audience needed to be identified. A new audience was a great subject of all avant-garde, of, of avant-gardistic and of course modernistic theatre. So what is the new audience for mm. Czech avant-garde? A new audience perspective was sought getting rid of the separation of stage and auditorium and ways <coughs> were also needed to deal with the, interpre with the interpretation and so interplay between two, two, these two spheres of the <coughs> stage and the auditorium. The architectural design of new theatre buildings was inspired above all by circle stages that owed an undeniable depth to the uh, circus big top, this classical big top of the circuses. Uh, up to Grofius theatre concept, uh, Totalist theatre, as you absolutely know. In harmony with the, with the search, <laughs> Funny things happened all the time. <laughs> In harmony with the search for a new kind of style uh, and new kind of space, other experiments to, uh, started to scrap elusive decoration continued, as did work on ways to depsycholize de acting on the spoken word, rhythm, music, lighting, the dramatic e effects of color and new materials that, uh, that were using in scenography, the legacy of pantomime and commedia dell'arte was examined, the relation between stage and auditorium reassessed, the apron was scrapped, play were produced in non theatrical or even completely open spaces. The traditional techniques of Asian theatre and the theatral displays of national people. Uh, were studied and so on. This all gave rise to a continuous logical line of development opened up by modernists followed by the avant-garde, its postulates duly taken yet farther by the alternative theatre of the 1960s. Among the tasks facing modern theatre was to solve the status of the drama, its function and its effect on the end or the final version of the production. The function of a play was debated and led to the conclusion that the text was raw material for the creation of a piece of theatre, not a template to be copied or strictly reproduced on the stage by an actor. In a sense, this meant liberating theatre from the burden some dictates of a text, which thought important had so far been used as the mainstay in stagecraft. Avant-garde circles sealed and were distinctive kind of dramatics works in which the status of the text was not to be all and the end of the all the stuffs that are used for the theatre artifact, for building the theatre artifact as well. So uh, in Czech avant-garde also, the Czech avant-garde started also to write a new kind of text, kind of librettos, scenarios, uh, and we can say, of course, some examples as Nesval's vaudeville Depeches on Wheels, which is in Czech Depeche na Kolečkách, from 1922. There was also Mahen's remar ra remarkable collection of the film libretti called Goose on the String, Husana Provasku, from 1925, and uh, hopefully you have heard something about the theatre Goose on the String, which is also inspired by this Ma Mahan's uh, collection of libretti. The structure of the text was loosened, opened up to the producer's interpretation, while authors tried to avoid traditional composition. Hence, these texts are often more like poetic images, polythematic, playful and filled with metaphors to expand the audience's imagination. Scripts tended to be little more than a framework of ideas that remained to be elaborated by the devices of theatre. Producers, especially Jiri Freika, sometimes took an actual work of poetry that could never be described as dramatic, 
they used synopsis, film libretti, ballet libretti, and other topics and texts that came into their own, especially around the time of the rift without the uh, within the <coughs> liberated theatre and were put to the great effect of the movement when avant-garde interests were turning towards, uh, turning towards the authorite cabaret and revue. Thanks to these genres uh, that offered intelligent fun, sometimes student humour, parody and topicality, the avant-garde enjoyed a considerable following. Dada influenced cabaret and revue that was built by uh, Jerzy Freika and his team. Uh, later, the Voskovets and very version of Revy scripts m became main <coughs> means to express reservation about the social situation. Individual programs also, uh, also became frankly enga engaged in social political terms. They just offered a truly living theatre for the modern audience, giving a uniquely stage form to reworkings of all the impulses arising out of the life of the times. These trends towards uh, liberating theatre uh, were also uh, written in all uh, the changes of the stage <coughs> crafts that were used for visual art aspects. Around the second decade of the 20th century, an architectural conception of stage design began to gather strength. Influenced by European modernists' experiments and supported by the principle of Russian constructivism, the stage became a three-dimensional space, determina <laughs> determinately hostile to any foreground of the effects on the audience's imaginations. The stage era was rid of any realistic painted scenery and more and more use was made uh, of abstract elements. <laughs> this did not seek to elicit any particular illusion. They just thought they often uh, acquired reason and meaning through the acting activity. The acting was what allowed an abstract setting, such a constructivistic stage, so much more variability than ever, and realistic scenery could. Uh, the later began. The later began restricted to the function of static visual elements, while an actor's movement made the space alive or dynamic. Finally, all painted scenery was rejected till 1920s, to be replaced during the early experiments by system of ladders, practical uh, landing, and wooden constructions. The role of designer was gradually in this time taken over by architects whose main task was to cater the function functionality. The newly organized stage, uh, stage space there had to be, had to be bring a, a, a appraisal of the action, acting process. The three-dimensional stage and or structure created created a reality firmly anchored in space and, uh, unlike painted canvas, gave an actor movements, added certainly a support. So the wooden construction, you can play much more better with a wooden construction than uh, with a painted wall behind you. So, uh, ideas about acting with, uh, within avant-garde uh, avant theory accordingly began to differ greatly from the practice of profe professional theatre, travelling theatre and, of course, amateur theatres. This showed primarily in characterization and characters' movements and speech. The aspiration to replace an illusion of the real world as transported to the stage under the previous convention, by a real-life experience, was reflected in the overall conception of modern acting. Its theoretical foundations were influenced by many factors. The most important was the reappraisal of the experiments of the modernists, of course, especially in connection with Mayer called Tyrov and Vaktangov, with the acting potential offered by a silent movie, the move away from the dom domination of the world and, um, of course, with the tendency towards making a performance more visual, period theories about the actor's art began, began to call for greater dynamism and flawless command of both verbal and physical material that the actor had at his disposal. 
on the top of the emphasis of uh, ways of speaking and the use of singing, dancing and gymnastic stils, skills and uh, playfulness, acrobatics, juggling and clownery became other important aspect of the prototypical new actor. Other other, other experiments aimed uh, to revive legacies from the history of theatre, types taken over from Commedia dell'arte, Fairground Theatre of the Middle Ages, cabaret genres, mime and improvisation in general, uh, Asian theatre and tradition of uh, old uh, Asian theatre styles, etc. With this, uh, with this conception, the actor became planned, material capable of detachment from his civilian self and working in such a way as not to disrupt the potential for collaboration with the director, his character, the rest of the cast and of course the audience. On basis for this was uh, then the deliberate assessment of merely living the part physical, <laughs> psychologically sorry, cutting back any of the subjectivity whereby simply discharging the part could become and uh, an end in itself. An important contributory factor here was the cinema, notably the slapstick films or slapstick comedies, since training in movement was not at the time a priority either in the drama schools or at the theatres. It was necessary to develop fully this side of acting. Impulses came both from the dance of expression uh, and the, the, then the highly popular and widely cultivated uritic, uh, eurythmics based on the teaching of Emile Jacques Dalcroze and uh, lots of Czech actor, actors went to study to a Hellerau school where Emile Jacques Dalcroze has his open lessons at the, at the time. And from sport, particularly fencing and athletics and um, emerging, um, emerging gym, gymnastic studies. Considerable influenced by all these uh, lines, of course, the development of movement skills emanated from the group of artists involved in the dance of expression, as I said before. Uh, there were also some schools from uh, uh, some uh, actors and, of course, dancers in Czechoslovakia, like School of Jarmila Kreslova, Joška Šaršerová, Mira Holzbachová, who was the actor at Liberated Theatre as well who followed the Dalcross school, Milcha Majerova and pupil of Dalcross and Laban, and two intended dancers, Sasha Machov and Joe Jenčík, who were, you know, connecting more, lots of style. So, la, styles. So, uh, the actor... Apa. I don't think this is something like... Uh, started to be like a uh, dyna dynamic part uh, of... Uh, filled with movement, uh, who helped the stage to be alive on somehow. Of course, uh, it was not anything only about, it was not uh, only in the movement, but uh, also uh, with, uh, with, with that came the verbal vision of uh, pronunciation and uh, other, other <laughs> style of rhythmics and din dynamics of the human speech ability. So under this influence of further development of the potential of the world, verbal performance started to detach itself from just conveying the text. Stylization reached almost the musical heights, drawing on the words, <coughs> rhythm, tempo, dynamics, gradation and alternation of the heights and laws of pitch. Attention was also <coughs> devoted to the choral recitation here too, the 1920s witnessed several striking experiments in Czechoslovakia that shifted the scope of stage speech all the way up to having recitation as incidental, incidental kind of music, the music connected, uh, connecting the human words uh, or human speech. These two acquired an important status within the entirety of work of theatre. Modernists and representatives of avant-garde alike collaborated with leading modern composers, which led to some serious shifts in how incidental music was understood. Uh, it's, uh, uh, con it's not the coincidence that uh, Iri Freika was the one who was experimenting with the voice band 
and Emil František Burian, uh, who just came with the voice band, was the part of uh, Jiří Frejka's acting group. And of course, the hugest experiment of voice band was not uh, in the concert era uh, or international concert era, but uh, in the connecting uh, of the voice band of the actually you understand definitely from the name of the t of this so this is the uh, this is the chorus of the voices as a sta special stage music so as art evolved evolved in modern times it completely changed the way theater was viewed from now on it would enlist all components of art on an equal footing their due stratification, the creation of linkages between linkages between them and their arrangement into an inter, uh, integrated complex is the task of the director. He or she had the sole responsibility for production, which in practice meant, within the synthetic conception of theatre, organizing and trying together the entire system of its components in such a way that the final product was a work that restored theatre to the theatre. This would go hand in hand with finding on an audience of an up-to-date mentality and sensibility truly really representative of modern civilization. So one of the remarkable personas who used to organize a group of young actors and in provocative way negotiate, negotiated the standards of contemporary theater was Iri Freika, 1904-1952. The young avant-gardist who decided to innovate theater in his practical experiments, also in his theoretical work, poetistic manifestos and metaphors uh, in th theory of its kind, uh, he, in a very provocative way, nego negotiated the standards of contemporary theatre. The cooperation with modern artists as, an, as architects and music composers led to a creation of progressive experimental group exploring and finding new ways for theatre work. Farika's group became a basic stone of uh, Osobozené divadlo, which is the liberated theatre, which was institutionalized as a theater branch of Devietzil, with Freika's vision of future new theater center, where also concerts, dance performances, and exhibitions would take place. Never happened. Uh, not so many happened. In 1926, when Freika realized his last poetistical performance, and after bad struggle between him and uh, the other lead leader of uh, uh, Liberated Theater in the Honsel, he was the one who was also at the beginning of his career. Uh, Freika left this liberated theater and he started to organize Theater Dada shortly after. In first stages uh, experiments, Theater Dada was oriented at the original cabaret productions, but suddenly uh, in few after few really popular, popular uh, stage, uh, stage performances, Freika started to call for uh, evenings of dramatic studies, where new ways of acting style and scenographical experiments were devo developed with connection, uh, while connected with architect Karel Schourek, Antonin Heitum, etc. Also in Moderni Studio, the last of Freika's theatre projects from 1920s, he had led to the composition of kind of uh, some kind of stage poetry that is connecting all the different style of arts, as I said before, because uh, the, th the part that I said before is from the Freika's theory of theater. So Freika was trying suddenly to use his theory into his practice, uh, or to move his theory into his practice. And uh, he started to build uh, the other world of theatre, not the realistic experiment on the stage, but also the vision that the stage is and has the potential to be kind of poetry. The stage is kind of the space and we have to build a new world behind this space. This, this uh, reality of theatre has another kind of uh, law and uh, uh, have another, has another differences but uh, it is possible to speak while using this poetry in the world, build it 
about behind the space. We can just talk the, to the audience and we can uh, change the world somehow. So taken from the abstract of natural, con <coughs> natural conception of the space inspired by constructivistic principles, Freika was searching the naturalism of its kind in this era of the late 20s. The art is not the copy of the reality. Art has to use actual and real moments inspired by life. Up to the old rule, the fool is the one who is watching the finger pointing to, to the moon, not the moon itself. Sterka, uh, started Freika built the vision of theater of its own poetry, philosophy and aesthetics which will, while using different possibilities of art, construct the space of its own, the world that is hiding behind all the stuff necessary for making the theater to be artificial through composition. Thus this magnetism of abstraction is not allowed to go so far where the audience will lose its interest. It is necessary to keep the audience in continuous contact to excite the responders, uh, respondents preparing something new in every single second while using different processes. Freika required to show the dynamic structures and lections, not the static, deep-seated, traditional, non-impressive these qualities were meaningfully only when using uh, or when they were used in the different contexts, not in empty forms. Up to Freika, the duty of the artist is to extract such a unit which will be clear and coherent, modern and actual, as the life and in its wideness is, not to use the swearing in aesthetical normativity, but to protect the mystery of natural, spontaneous, creative act. He wanted to dedicate all the, uh, all the theater work to the scale of actual audience, the audience of new nerves, audience of the sensitivity that was newly born in human beings during and after the Great War. Theater is not about the letters and clowns. Theater is about living people and of course the living personalities in the audience who should be excited not to be bored. Uh, he thoughts also about uh, the evolution process, uh, or maybe not the process, but the birth of the modern actor. And uh, this is written in and resumed in his study with the narrative name Človek, který se stal hercem, the man who became to be an actor in 1928, where Freika is describing the first choice to the set from the first choice to the settling of an actor our actor's own individuality up to ha his long-time research of human psychology, aesthetic, theatre history and praxis. The sep second part of this book is dedicated to irrational spheres of the work, like kind of reincarnation, Česky převtělení, ček, in Czech převtělení, which is taken as a deep process where lots of traits are concretizing its form to the figure filled with its unique dynamics that is going to be presented on stage in interaction between the characters or persons on the stage, actor himself, herself, and of course the interaction between him or her and the audience. Up to Freika, the reincarnation of the whole personality to the new person before the action means the essence of the showmanship. And to conclude very quickly, from the not so glorious beginning related to the minimum of knowledges of Freika and his team struggling <coughs> for the modern theatre or modern theatre style, as his work led to the searching of stage lyricism hand by hand with the influence of poetism. After bringing this vision to the point, he started with the uh, realization of the living theater, Živé divadlo, which is his other theoretical book uh, from 1936, where he was experimenting with the heritage of theater, definition of modern types of uh, commedia dell'arte, etc. Theatre of actuality, like Cabaret Dada, crude theatre undersigned by the moral and political appeal, anti-elusive concrete forms of theatre, 
All these keepings in touch with uh, poetical principles constructed on lyricism possibilities of stage taken as the space built on an extra extraordinary regularity, but still be in this real so society and work for, for this means real society of 1920s and 1930s. As uh, far as we know, Freika was the director as well during the Second World War era, so also during the protectorate, uh, Bemen and Meren, and uh, he, st he started to be the strongest director of National Theatre, but as well uh, the situ political situation which changed after the Second World War led Freika to the smallest theatre, finally to the smallest theatre that was possible in Prague. And uh, he was judged also by the society while he wasn't that kind of strong communistic uh, presenter. He was kind of uh, salon or somehow said light communistic version. So uh, in the <coughs> era of uh, not very good uh, known processes with Mil Milada Horákova, he just started to commit the suicide, which he finally did in 1952. His heritage for Czech theatre is very strongly written in actors of uh, now very old generation of actors. Lots of them are, of course, dead. But uh, he was the one who prepared uh, all uh, the uh, all the scripts for artistic school called uh, Damu, which means uh, Theatre Academy of Music uh, in Prague. And uh, he prepared for theatre also lots of uh, talented actors and of course young starting the directors. But of course in 1950s uh, his heritage was kind of hidden and hiding especially because of his uh, political statuses and uh, after 1960s and after opening again uh, after opening his theory again uh, there was no one to make the greatest connection with all the heritage he brought in his uh, theoretical studies and practical work so finally, in after, after the era of millennium, we are opening again the books uh, from Jiří Freika and we are trying to search uh, in his old directing book that, that are in National Museum Prague. And we are trying to uh, do something like reconstruction of his strong visions of theatre. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> thank you so much. Please, Hannah and Thomas, jo join us here. Try to reorganize the space just for a short, short uh, Q and N and A section. Uh, thank you very much, Andrea, for yeah. introducing us to to Yuzi Freika. The first uh, stages of our project were, mm -hmm. uh, from the Czech perspective, somehow dominated by uh, Emil Frantisek Burian. Uh, so now we are moving towards, towards Freika. So, uh, questions from you, comments, uh, the floor is yours, of course. As usual, there should be someone to start. No. Yes, of course. Uh, I can't well, remember. I have a uh, question for colleague uh, uh, Tatlišić. Uh, apart from Croatia, so we basically know a lot about the uh, Nostalgia as he developed a lot of it in Zagreb, as well, uh, Zagreb scene as well. Um, there is one thing that I want to ask, and uh, 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 colleague Joachim uh, 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 inspired me, and that was, uh, and also you, when you mentioned that uh, we are still not prepared for the performance in zero gravity, so it will start to look better eventually. Uh, has you ever, ever to discuss the particularities, the methodology uh, that actors should apply when preparing uh, for such a performance, the skills that actors should have. I mean, he's very um, eloquent on the uh, conceptual level, mm -hmm. but what about the practical, the practicalities of uh, such performances? I, I don't know a lot about that, and I would like mm -hmm. to, uh, to know. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, thank you very much. It's an interesting question. Uh, we have uh, here, 
my, my colleague, Jana Pavlic, she was a dramaturg. She works with Dragan Givadino. Maybe she would, she would like to say something, something about, about this, basically how he works with actors. Uh, and uh, how did you, basically, when you worked on, a, on the 50 years project, how did you include this, this the question, the, our colleague uh, from Zagreb? Yeah. Space project, the Russian space project. Uh, it was kind of special training because Russians base their forces on vodka and <laughs> 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 they were Untypical. selection which was done uh, in the space city because uh, we didn't have we had to have uh, medical check before we went to the city of Yana. Uh, this has been medicals, but uh, then on the spot in the Star City, which is the, the center of the Russian space program near Moscow, um, the trainers, which were generals and uh, uh, high officials of the space pro Russian space program, uh, trained actors with Moscow. And with uh, sauna. <laughs> so, um, in the morning, after one day of drinking vodka, the one who didn't show didn't go. <laughs> 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 Great method. This was basically uh, the practical physical training for yeah. this. Uh, but otherwise, we were studying normally like any normal theater before performer. There was a text I wrote based on Gilgamesh which was because this was not just the first, it was not the first uh, Gravity Zero theater performance because a uh, French choreographer, um, does this with Ariana Space Project in France, and she did this Space gravity, um, Zero Gravity action before, but we did the first play, uh, Gravity Zero, theater performance with the text. There was a small text. Each, each situation in Gravity Zero in this para parabolic flights uh, towers about 30 seconds. So it's um, six times 30 seconds of theater performance with text. So there were very short texts of 30 seconds spoken and uh, there was an actress, the oldest one was 65 years old. She is a real trained drama um, com uh, actor, uh, tragedian. She was trained in uh, Hat in Moscow when she was young, but she was, she's a very nice Virginian. I mean, she died two years ago. So she will be replaced in the next repetition by a single. And already, which is said, the main two actors already died and uh, the oldest ones, and the one was already replaced in the first repetition, and the second one will be replaced in 2002. So basically, it's the training of a normal actor. But we work with the choreographer, which is a normal procedure as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Do you have any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> I think it should be it should be included in the history of actors' methods. <laughs> I feel that you are in the room, Bryce. Well, I was just wondering about Chief um, Adina a little bit because I just saw his production of Gravity Zero and Victoria. I don't know if he's aware of this production where he's using, again, returning to these fascistic aesthetics as a form of critique to look at this particular historical figure who was um, not included, according to Givadino from the Q&A afterwards, not included in Slovenian histories um, <coughs> as, as a kind of nationalist, but also as a fascist. Um, and I was just curious, have you seen this production? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I was curious about your um, your analysis of, of this about in in 2017 2018 the the reemergence of these now quite familiar aesthetics 
if they remain um, as effective uh, or as instrumental today as they have been historically? I think or do they become a museum aesthetic? Uh, this is the question you're going to answer after, after my answer. Uh, how did you uh, how did you watch the performance? Because I I saw almost all of the performances of Dragon Givadino, so basically I, I see them in, in this context. But this performance uses a, a term which is which is used a lot by Slavoj Žižek, the over identification, and I think he uses over identification in this uh, in the performance you were you were talking about. But sometimes the performance as an oratorium, as, uh, he also calls it, uh, names it an oratorium. This oratorium can also uh, produce some the effects which are the counter effects of what should be uh, produced by over identification. So. Uh, I have I had mixed feelings with this performance. I uh, I think it was very very interesting, but it it was a neglected part of not just Slovene but also Austrian history because he was living in Austria and he was German Slovene and so on. But it this performance opens some new some new perspective of true history. It talks about the the problems of 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 um, uh, of um, of today's Europe. Which, uh, which I find uh, important, uh, but it's aesthetically it's very, very differs very much from his 50 years project. So I think it's, a, it's, it's something which differs a lot from his own aesthetics. Mm. And how did you like the performance? <laughs> Um, well, I was on the jury for VTEP, so I don't think I'm allowed to say. This is the dialogue for the, for the coffee break, in fact. I'm looking yeah. for a, a dry face at his... Uh, yeah. No, yeah, uh, I mean, what was, what was kind of inter intriguing to me was that he had said that the aim was to obliterate the memory of this yeah. man, as well yeah. as destroy the memory of this. And I, and I was really curious about what this means for the archive. Um, rather than simply sort of calling out the memory in order to interrogate it, the idea that this memory can be in some way obliterated, which for me the danger was that this equates to forgetting a form of cultural yeah. amnesia. I don't think that was his intention, but I think that's potentially an outcome of that strategy. I do agree it can produce this effect, but we have other directors like Oliver Furlich, who's very well known in Poland also, who does the inverse things. Yeah, he basically digs into the history mm -hmm. and to to com comment the, the 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 contemporaneity. But he works in the same theater. I used to work for 25 years. Yeah. I have one strong question, but I think I, I leave it for for later discussions because the still is the the most important questions we are asking all the time during this project. Is this true that uh, constructivism or other avant-garde mm -hmm. uh, ideas are uh, our Slovenian or Central European uh, peripheral um, way of uh, revolutionizing uh, bourgeois, French, German, Italian, <laughs> art, or are we just still a kind of field between two strong, uh -huh. you know, cultures, theater cultures, that we are squeezed between. Uh, we are all the time uh, discussing this, these issues, and I think we will come back uh, to it uh, later. So, thank you very much for this great introduction for our conference. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.